the true first word that would come to mind is champion. I mean, that's what, what are you going to say? The, the numbers don't lie. Now, what did you do? You were in integral in his first three championships, right? You know, I played a, I played my part. It's a, it's a big team effort. But I mean, really, Matt was at the center of that, and uh, that was, uh, gosh, ten years ago now. Um, so, yeah, I was involved. I was his crew chief in '99 and 2000, and uh, Reggie was there as he has been all these years, and. And uh, we just went out and uh, put our heads together and as a team did the best we could. And, and really, it, I mean, the results, it all came together. <laughs> when we uh, first got together with you a couple of years ago, you had started your Bazaar's performance and you had brought out the ECUs and the traction control systems and you were bringing all that in line. You said that it got tough a few times. Like when you're trying to be an entrepreneur and you're starting to do some things that are as complicated as what you choose to do, you didn't start an ice cream stand for crying out loud. And you said you drew some inspiration from him that there were times when it was just like, ah, and you just had to gird up and dig deep. Absolutely. I mean, that, uh, you know, in, in many ways, he's uh, very inspirational to me. And in those tough moments, I'd stop and think back and, and, and say, okay, you know, in, in a racing situation when uh, we weren't quite where we needed to be and in, it was the last qualifying, it, it, the weight was on Matt's shoulders and he would man up and just get it done. And I thought to myself, okay, what would Matt do in this situation? You know, would you go crawling away or would you man up and get it done? And, and a lot of times that helped me get through some pretty dark and difficult times, for sure. Elaborate more on Amara Bazaz. I mean, he's... He's I can't elaborate too much because kids are watching this video. <laughs> um, no, in all honesty, uh, I don't know. Mara and I just hit it off really well. I mean, he realistically he first came into the into motorcycle racing around mid 1997 with the Yosh crew. I guess he applied for a job there or something. I don't know exactly. It's too long to know. The, can remember the exact story, but yeah. um, Actually, first time he really ever seen me was in New Hampshire at the Loudoun racetrack on a Ducati and I won the race by about three laps. <laughs> Wasn't that much but it was just, I was gone, I was half a lap in front and uh, you know popping wheelies and all that sort of stuff so he was, um, he was, uh, he seen that and then he got into, ra into the racing scene not that long after that I think um, with the Yoshimura guys he, he applied for, maybe they were looking for a data guy or something and he got into that side of it. Um, and then I came back to Suzuki for the 98 season. <coughs> Started uh, just working, you know, with the crew chief and all that sort of stuff. And I was still a data guy. And then halfway through the 98 season, I'm like, oh, this, the, we could, I really liked him. And I thought we could figure out a lot of stuff together and, and that he could be really, really good for, for me and for my program. And, uh, and I asked to have him as my crew chief for, 1999 so and he wasn't that sure about it at first he was like he was I don't he didn't have the confidence in himself to be a crew chief man you know as a normal crew chief um, and so in the end I said no no I I want Bazaz as my crew chief so let's make it happen so in he got thrust into that job and we just really just approached things a little bit differently to what to what uh, I was used to and to what most people are used to approach thing with crew chiefs, you know, so um, just learned a little, started to learn more about the bike and the way things worked and, and different things. So it was, it was good. It was a good, good relationship. Yes, because the, his view, which is beginning to become the standard view now, is to approach it more from a mathematical physics point of view as to mm. what all this is doing. And mm. if you want m m more weight you move this component versus some other component that everybody else was always moving before. Yeah, I mean in the end there's, you know, to get into a really technical aspect side of it, I mean it'd take a long time, but but yeah, it was just it, it, 
to help keep everything together and to keep things organised from the racing side of things and to understand if you did this, this is actually what happened, uh, not on the racetrack, but to the actual bike, yeah. um, et cetera, et cetera. He certainly helped us go forward, that's for sure. Helped me go forward. So some riding technique stuff. You said uh, in a speed interview at one point that you had to change your riding style to uh, when Ben, after Ben won the, the championship in 2006, came back in 2007, 2008, and you were changing your riding style a bit. Can you elaborate a little more on that? Um, to be honest with you, I'm not too sure. I, I mean, I didn't change my riding style. Maybe that was, maybe that came across different to what it was supposed to. Okay. Um, I definitely didn't change my riding style though, not at all. I've always had my, the way that I've done, you know, I've, I've raced a road race bike similar to a motocross bike. I just like to get it in deep and get it squared up and and get it turned and get it off the corner as quick as possible. Um, as opposed to say corner speed. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Corner speed's no good to anybody. If someone's stuck in front of you and, you know, that doesn't have corner speed, what are you going to do with your corner speed? <laughs> There's not much you can do with it, is it? Yeah. You're going to ride off the racetrack, I suppose, I don't know. So, but if I get in the, if I outbreak somebody with any corner speed, um, and I decide I'm going to park into the middle of the corner, there ain't nothing they're going to do about it. They're not going to ride around the outside because I see someone on the outside is going to put them in the grass, right? So it, it's corner speed's completely overrated, 100%. So, yeah. I mean, look at Grand Prix, the guy with the least amount of corner speeds winning the world championship and is a seven or eight time world champion. That's Rossi. So Lorenzo and Pedrosa get around the corner quicker than Rossi. Just so happens he gets into it and off it better than they do. <laughs> One of those motocross techniques, and I didn't understand it until you told me. I had heard it many times, especially turn 11 at Laguna Seca. Your bike would go, rrr, 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 and I was like, what? What? And you, Traction control. Yeah, it's tra <laughs> <laughs> and You're doing the motocross thing where you slip the clutch to get the revs up so that it'll bite harder. Yeah, to help get the revs up, but also traditional road racing methods for for stopping wheelies or or you know for things like that you know i've heard i heard it from the day from from the time i started road racing you know yeah if you over this hill when it wheelies just stab the back brake a little bit you know and there is no way there is you can have as much feel by pushing on that rear brake with your foot as what you can feel through the clutch in your fingers and uh from the time I was a motocrosser and came into road race, and I thought that was quite funny that you know the guys actually did this. You know, maybe back in the early days, the clutches never had as much feel as when I. By the time I started road racing or something, I don't know. But the fact that they used the rear brake um, to kill drive, to keep a front wheel down, or to do other things, I, I always, it's sort of amusing, really, yeah, for me because yeah. I'm like that's not even close to the right way, you know, for the way that I think about things. So. You know, I use the clutch a lot, and I still do to this day. I especially use it for killing, killing the drive of the motorcycle if I need to, so. As you know, I rub my finger on the clutch constantly, just like a motocross rider, it's always on the clutch. It never comes off the clutch, even down the straights, and it's always out on the clutch. Um, it saved my ass in Atlanta on that tire blowout. The clutch, oh. is, the clutch is essentially what saved my ass there. When it, when it came out, I nicked it and started killing, killing it a little bit just to help things get back in line. Um, you know, so again, without getting too technical about it, because it would take forever, the clutch is a much better way to, to um, kill the drive of a motorcycle, stop a wheelie, stop the rear getting out too far rather than shutting the thing down a little bit, just kill that drive, that clutch a little bit and keep the throttle constant, you know, things like that. The clutch is, the clutch is much, much better oh. way to do it. Much, much better. I don't know anyone that has as much feel through the bottom of their foot as what, I, what you have in your finger. Do you know anyone? <laughs> and the clutch is, is an instant feedback, a rear brake. Go and push any rear brake on any racing motorcycle. You'll see the, the masses, the, the reservoir move a little bit, the master cylinder move a little yeah, bit, you yeah. see a little bit of flex here and there and this and that. That's not like that little hydraulic clutch, it's just instantaneous. There's no way you can do the same thing with your foot. Impossibility. Yeah.